Hi, my name is Laura Salavos. I'm a British portrait artist. And if you're watching this video, you are going to see a full process from start to finish of a painting I have recently made. So I'm currently living in Vancouver in Canada, but I was born in Blackpool and I went to Stanner County Primary School. I went to Hodgson High School, Blackpool Sixth Form. Then I went to Blackpool and Fowle College to do my foundation year in art so that I could then go to university and study fine art, which I did at Manchester Metropolitan University. And after my degree, I went to uh, work for a few different companies, but I eventually ended up going for it. And I've been a full-time artist now, uh, 10 years this August. So today I've gone with a circus theme and I've decided to paint this lady juggling apples. So you're going to see me begin to work on this painting now. Okay, so obviously everyone starts with a blank white piece of paper, canvas. I don't like working on a flat white surface. I like to work on top of something. It feels less precious that way. So I quite often will paint the background in a dark colour or a vibrant colour. So as you can see today, I'm actually going with a neon pink. Uh, it doesn't get much brighter than that. After my canvas is dried, I then draw up a pencil grid and I do the same grid on the image I'm working from. I actually use a tablet with my images, uh, my iPad, and that generates a grid automatically. But this is how I make sure that I get a fairly accurate pencil sketch drawn up to begin from. So you can see I'm, I'm drawing that out here, just working with those grid points as like good markers of where all the features should be. And when I'm fairly happy with my pencil sketch, that everything is in the right place, I will then draw over this with a marker pen. And that just solidifies the sketch. It, it confirms exactly where I want everything to be. When I get the pen going, it's a nice clean drawing. And it also means because I've used a dark black marker pen that any paint I apply on top, if I apply it thin enough, the marker pen will kind of bleed through and I won't lose that sketch, which is really helpful just for keeping a drawing contained. And then these thick black stripes that I'm sort of adding on her arm there, it's just to, um, it's just a mental note to myself that that's going to be shadow. So after I've got that pen sketch done, it's time to start with paint. So I just pick any colours really, it's not specific, as long as one is dark, one is medium toned and one is light so that we have our values in place. And values are the darkest shades up, right up to the lightest shades in white. That's the scale of value. So I just need a dark value, a mid-tone value, and a light value. And then I just go in working with the references I've left myself where I remember this will be lighter, this will be darker. And I just start block painting those shades in. And now I'm going in with the mid-tone. So as you can see, I've got my darks and lights done. So we're just bringing that mid-tone in. Now, I have no intention of leaving this a brown painting. As you can see, there's quite a lot of brown sort of muddy tones in this painting so far. Thankfully, we started on the bright pink. So that's still showing through. And you can see on the sleeves actually where that pink is glowing through. That's why it's sometimes fun to start with a very bright color underneath because you can leave areas where that will glow through. And it makes a bit more of an interesting painting. I'm going to finish with that mid-tone, that sort of more orangey peachy. And then I kind of have a more coming to life, more 3D figure on the canvas. And this is a good base for me to work on to start to bring more real tones in or more light and shade. So as you can see now, I've, got, I've blocked out that apple, but I'm now going in with the greens and I'm going to bring an element of like shade and light with those greens but I'm doing very quick soft brush strokes just almost just brushing over the canvas really lightly just keeping it nice and free nothing too structured nothing too accurate just very softly here we'll have some light greens here we'll have some dark greens just kind of brushing over it and now I'm paying attention to her t-shirt where the darks and lights are to create shapes and creases in her t-shirt and now I'm just going to lighten that same purple taking exactly the same color but just running a lighter color through it and that's going to be the the other stripe tone just so I've got some definition they're just blocked in and then I'm going to totally contrast that with something nice and bright and we'll run that, that down the middle where the light would naturally hit so I'm just finding those places and already 
that's creating more depth. You've got the lighter colours jumping out and the darker colours are receding and we've still got that glowy pink coming through from the background. So still at this stage, colours aren't necessarily set. I think I'm quite happy with the apples being green, but the colours of the clown and her outfit are very easy to change. Nothing is permanent and as the painting evolves, as I start to look at how the colours are sitting next to each other, it's very easy to chop and change these. So if I think that she would actually benefit from having a blue bauble in her hair or a yellow t-shirt, then I just paint over. It's a very layered process. And with this method, you don't need to be so precious with how you're working. You don't need to be so concerned that every mark you make has to be perfect and correct. No, absolutely not. And that's exactly why I start not on a blank white canvas. I don't want to feel pressure and stressed that everything has to be perfect. It evolves and by using a very layered technique, it gives me the freedom to experiment and decide in the moment if I'm happy with that colour, if I'm happy with how those colours are sitting next to each other. If I think the figure needs to be lightened or darkened, if I think the apples need to become pears, everything can evolve as I'm working and I'm constantly making judgments of if I think the painting is working yet or not. And as you can see, I do sometimes work with quite a large brush, which forces me to be quite brave with my choices. If I was working with a very tiny brush and doing all these features around her face, I think I'd feel very precious over making sure I get that nose just right and those lips just right. But by working with a big brush, it forces you to make the choice of, I want a big, bold paint mark here. There's, there's no way I can make a very soft curve or a tiny maneuver with this big brush. So I've just got to go for it and be bold and brave. And I think that can sometimes bring surprising results. So now these first layers of paint, these first colors have gone in and it's dried. I'm now going back in with my marker pen just to confirm where all those shapes and lines should be. We're just making everything pop again, making sure, yep, yeah, that's where the hairline should finish and this is how I want her sleeves to look and just sharpening it all up. And you can see the painting starting to evolve by the layers we already have with, with very little time. You've got that bright pink glowing through in some places. You've got those first three dark, mid and light value tones that I applied. And then you've got the colours I've started to choose to block out the other areas. And so now with the pen, we've already got quite a layered painting with some fun brush marks. For example, that pink thick brush mark on the bottom of her arm. It's capturing my eye and I really like how that's working with the orange in her arm. It might not stay there, but at the moment I'm really enjoying that part of the painting and I'm really enjoying how the sleeves are looking. I think I want to put more colour and contrast into her top make it a bit more dramatic to look at, a bit more fun to look at. Um, but I'm really happy with how it's coming together so far. I also like to play with the pen marks, you know. They are there to guide me and to and to tighten up the image. Every time I go in with the pen, it's to tighten up the sketch, bring it back to the sketch. Um, but sometimes it's fun to, rather than paint a dark colour to make a shadow, sometimes it's fun to draw lots of little lines like I'm doing there, lots of little lines to create a shadow. And sometimes it's fun to go in with really big, thick marks and just experiment with what you like, what you enjoy to do with different mark making. It definitely makes for an interesting painting when you have lots of different types of mark making across your work. And you can only really discover what you like or what you're good at by trying. So now I'm going to um, bring some a different colour into the painting. I think I decided quite early on that because there was no yellow over the figure, I wanted to go really bright yellow with that background. And I think that bright yellow and bright pink together are a really fun combination. Really bright and vibrant. And, you know, we want this to be a fun painting. It's a circus. It's a clown. She's a juggler. She's got pink fluffy hair. She's in stripy t-shirt. We want to make it a fun painting. So, I decided, yeah, that, that yellow is the right colour choice for the background here. Now, if I'd painted it and I didn't like the yellow, it would be very easy to paint over the top with a different colour, right? Again, nothing is permanent. We can always make changes. But I think that yellow has changed now how that figure is standing. 
and she's looking a bit too dark so I think I want to go in and bring some of that yellow across her figure almost like the light around her is glowing on her skin it's reflecting off her skin and I'm going to bring some bright tones into the face and see if that brings her a bit more to life now she is a clown so I think some face paint is fun we're going to put some white face paint across her and some little marks some little teardrop shapes try and bring in that more clown element and I think she's definitely going to need a red nose at some point I'm just still adding highlights across her white glove that she's wearing while she's holding the apple and I think her t-shirt needs brightening as well so I think I'm just going to keep adding these little pops of highlight exactly where I imagine the light would be hitting her that's where you want to put your highlights so there I'm just going to put some yellow highlights across her t-shirt and see how that looks if that's helped brighten things up and on those baubles in her hair, just some little, and again, the same way you make the lines with the pen, those stripy lines with the pen, you can do exactly the same technique with paint, with a paintbrush. So I'm, going to, I'm introducing these blues and sort of blue greens here because I think it's really going to stand out against the orange tones, those kind of more muddier tones that were originally on the background. And I'm still looking at this painting now and I can still see that bright pink fluorescent glowing through from the background. And I can still see the first, do you see on her arm, the thick black lines? I can still faintly see them showing through that sort of muddy brown colour on the shadow of her arm. And... I really like how you can still see the first stages of the painting. I can even see the pencil grid if you look top left where there's that bit of pink still showing. I can still see those very first marks I made. So there's a whole story of how this painting came to life. If you take the time to look across the canvas, you can see so many early elements and then these final highlights that are going in now just to make everything pop. And I think it would be a fun exercise to see what hidden elements you can keep in your painting by the end. I'm using the paintbrush like a pen, I'm kind of drawing with it now, just adding these. Oh, and I've decided to add a third apple there, very subtle, soft third apple. You wouldn't notice it if you were stood so far away, but as you get closer, you can kind of see, oh, there's a shape of a, an idea of an apple there. Maybe it's already thrown up through the air and we're waiting for it to come back down. I'm trying to make her nose a bit redder now and uh, bring that clown element in, bring some of those reds through. And every time I use a colour somewhere, if I use the red on her nose, I then put that stripe on her neck. It brings synchronicity to the painting, just kind of tying everything together, making sure it's all consistent and considered bringing more of those blues in up over her face so it kind of ties in with her sleeves and the braces. And I'm starting to get to the point where I'm feeling like this is a fairly finished painting. It's, it, was, it was a quick painting, but I feel like we're, we're fairly finished now. I'm just starting to look closer and see where I can bring some more of those tones in. So I think I decided actually let's, let's balance out the head a bit more by bringing some of her hair down the side there. So it's not just on the top of her head, let's have some hair at the side. And we're just bringing the colors across. See that where you saw my, my hands over her face? I didn't like what I did. So I, while it was still wet, I wiped it away. Otherwise I would have had to wait for it to dry and then paint over it to get rid of it, which is fine. Either way works, but I think you'll start to know and understand when you feel the marks you've made are working or not working, the colour choices you've made are working or not working. And when you look at this glove with this apple, it's all very loose, it's all very nondescript. It's a very free, quick, thick brush mark made painting. It's not accurate, it's not photorealism, it's a very fast, vibrant, colourful, full of life, full of energy. And I think I've decided we're finished. You can see I've added some pen over the top and I've just sharpened up some of those whites to really pop. So we've got some nice highlights. 
and I've played with the pen. You can see around the apple, there's thin lines and there's thick lines and we've got so many colors going on and still that pink vibrant glowing through from underneath. And that is our finished painting. So I hope that's inspired you for the next time you make a painting. There are no rules. You can absolutely go for it. Big brushes, small brushes, bright colors, dark colors. And thank you for watching this video today. I wish you all the best of luck and I look forward to seeing your artwork in the future.